Hi guys, welcome to CYC, my name is Nathan Hayes and today I want to go through the psychology of parts. I mentioned this in a previous video about the puppet and the consciousness and how I love that analogy and I said it was kind of linked into psychology of parts and I'll explain more of it. So here we are explaining more of it. I'm going to kind of go through how it's used in a therapeutic sense and I'm also going to ask or kind of give you a way you can use it in a more kind of creative everyday sort of way of thinking or something. Okay, <laughs> so in a therapeutic sense, if you've ever watched the movie Inside Out, it's essentially that where each emotion is an individual inside the head of the, the person. So this is really useful for complicated things. Um, like, honestly, so one of the most contentious or difficult things to talk about or to process on a human level is if someone commits suicide and you're left behind. It's just a minefield. There's so many emotions. There's so, there's, it's such a range. And basically psychology of parts asks you to identify each of them and to address each of them individually. So with, in that case or whatever, you will say that you love the person and you will also say you hate the person. You will say you could have done more and you will say why didn't they do more? And you will say it's the world's fault and you're going to say it's the world's fault for being too difficult and then you're going to say it's the person's fault for not being strong enough and then there's going to be um, everything, just like literally everything. It's an absolute minefield of just emotions. So in that setting, psychology of parts would ask you to identify anger in relation to that, in, to, in relation to suicide of the person who passed. What parts make you angry? Why are you angry at them? What else are you angry at? And this is, you are saying this, but you're, you're trusting. So in a therapy setting or whatever, the person there and then there's the person that passed. The person that's there, you're you're trusting, or you're telling them that you know they're a good person. You know that they truly loved the person who passed. That they they would have done anything, and it's just it's a messy situation. But they are a good person. But we're just going to we're going to kind of put it aside, and we're just going to isolate a singular emotion and just say anger. Spitball it. Tell me how you feel in relation to that, and then you're going to do it about blame or judgment or whatever else you're going to do about love and you're going to do about loss and missing and how so you you do a list of just positives as well all the things that you now will miss about them all the good things all the everything else all the things you could have done more um and again and no defenses here as in, like, I could have offered to tie his shoes. It can be, like, that small. And there's no, like, well, he's an adult, so he should have done it himself. None of that. You are giving full, open range to the emotion, if that makes sense. So when you're exploring anger, you're exploring, man, I'd strangle the fucker if he was here. Because how could he? <laughs> like, which... As I said, it's just, it's a messy issue. Um, but it's natural to feel all that emotion. So again, when you're giving it to anger, you give full range of, of motion. You give, you allow it everything and just explore it fully and recognize that some of them are just throwaway comments, are just kind of, ah, and you kind of just get it off your chest or whatever sort of thing. And the same will be said for the positives. I could have done more. I could have I could have helped them here. I could have been more involved, talked more, done all this stuff or whatever. And again, you're going to say, I could like, you know, he asked me to tie his shoelaces and I totally could have done that. And again, you're going to allow it and then just those the the smaller ones or the less important ones will just kind of fall off and you'll kind of slowly be able to navigate and kind of move forward and actually process each emotion. Um, so that's how it's used in a therapeutic sense. Um, 
and it's really good it's very powerful um it's not good for every situation there are situations where if someone has been taken advantage of um either financially or physically or like whatever else um and they're kind of naive to some facet as in like they they don't recognize that when uh so they don't recognize that when some guy comes up to the girl in like the nightclub or whatever and everyone's dancing and everyone's having a good time or whatever and there's just that one girl who's kind of sitting on her own and is just being a little bit isolated and that he chooses to go up to her and while this might be like you know the precious little wallflower and like the the diamond in the rough and like all this other stuff it's like you know out of everyone but he saw me even though like you know there was all these other girls it's like no 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 he saw someone that was isolated and vulnerable and looking weak in some in uh, on some in some way he saw it as an opportunity and then something happened afterwards or whatever um if she doesn't recognize that that was a red flag and is naive to the fact that there are predators that there are people who will filter for that will look for signs of weakness of isolation of um whatever else psychology of parts might not wouldn't be really appropriate as the first therapy assertiveness training might be a bit more appropriate or just humanist okay sorry okay i'm gonna get lost in terms here um there's other therapies that might be um a bit better um such as trying to get around her naivety and get her to recognize that these are things make her give her tools to deal with people in so in similar situations or whatever make her feel empowered and all the rest um might be better than openly exploring every available emotion in a situation i hope that makes sense okay so that's that's a ton of of theory or just kind of the more act like psychology side of it or whatever but either way, so psychology parts, breaking your emotions into individuals, whatever, and addressing them individually as uh, one at a time, ignoring everything else, trusting that you are a good person and that just because you're ex you're experiencing jealousy or anger or hatred or um, judgment or like whatever else, just because you're experiencing an emotion that should be negative or is counted as negative doesn't mean you're a negative person or a bad person. It just means you've experienced this and you don't want to repress it and hide it or whatever you want to be fully aware and conscious of how this affects you your behavior and how it's going to affect other people um so it's very uh, it's all about being self-aware essentially so with all of that said how does this relate to a life of creativity or a life of trying to push the frontier, explore, um, discover, experience, feel, all the rest of this chaos of that is life and all the rest. How does this link into it? And the answer is actually pretty easy. Uh, it's essentially chaos versus order, if you really want to boil it down. Every time that you take a step forward in in anything, you're going to have the urge, like, this is new, this is amazing. And you're also going to have the urges, this is new, this is scary. You're going to have both. You're just, there's going to be a new business venture. It's like, yeah. And then you're going to be like, I'm way out of my depth. I've never done this before. Oh, dear. Okay. Addressing both of them individually, separate of each other, and just steel manning, uh, which means to give the best argument for a position. And you're going to give the best argument for both positions one at a time no dialogue between the two until they're both finished and then you let the two talk and then you decide whether you're going to step forward or stay where you are that also when there's like personal uh, frustration and irritation that life is getting in the way 
that's a really common one amongst creatives especially but business people and all the rest you've to work the bad job to get the good job you've to work the bad job and do a side hustle and keep yourself healthy and fit and network and do everything with zero sleep just so that maybe the side hustle pays off yeah essentially uh sucks i know um and it's just a matter of addressing each individual part essentially it's just a matter of saying this is too much and saying like hey like it's actually a ton this is you're asking a lot of yourself there's no way you can keep this up and recognizing in yourself it's like yeah probably right and just again being self-aware but i'm going to do it for like five to ten years and hopefully it pays off that'll be one and everything else um but yeah, working the bad job is another thing. And you can see it as like a limiting factor because it's a weight and it digs into your time and it digs into your effort and you come home after a day of work and you're just tired. Which, so, on the negative side, you're tired, you're fatigued. It's, it's taking up some of your headspace. Half of your learning is now to do with this work thing that you don't care about and half your friends are now related to this work thing and they don't have any interest in your side project and your side hustle whatever it is all the rest yeah so that's the negatives of having a normal job and having a side hustle because it didn't work out by the time you're 21 and reality hit and you had to get a proper job we're all there don't worry uh <laughs> okay on the plus side can you think of a plus Okay, I can because I've prepped for the... Well, honestly, there's not much prep going into these daily videos anymore. Hence why they're going longer and hence why they're a bit rambly because I just don't have the time. But a positive of having the crappy job and of having to routine yourself and oh, blah, 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 all the boring non-creative stuff that gets you a normal 9-to-5 job or usually a bar job which isn't 9-to-5 or whatever it is, whatever your crap job is, that's the job. What does it do that you didn't have when you were 18 and you were just doing your side hustle? At 18, you were doing, like, let's say, music or something like that. And you were full on and you were really going for it and all the rest and it just didn't work out. And then you had to hit reality and all the rest. What does this now mean for your music? It means you're financially free. It means that you're now no longer trying to make music to make money. Do you get me? So now there's like a, there's a freedom so acknowledging that that is an emotion and then exploring it and saying, oh, so now I do have a freedom. I don't have to cater to anyone. If I have this crappy job and have this hobby at the same time, I can work this for a, like my timeline now starts to stretch out. I don't need to make the music work within a year. I can make it work within 10 years and I can really just start messing with the rules, introducing just like burn everything that happened beforehand introduce new influences new ideas start breaking and bending rules just for the sake of it and just have at it because who cares because i'm not doing it for the money anymore i'm doing it for the art that might be the breakthrough that was a that was okay i'm literally just talking for myself that was one for me so i can't say much but meditating or taking time and looking because you're going to have negatives and there's going to be something whatever it is there's going to be a spark of good just the tiniest bit of good in everything and if you can do this in a way where you address the negative in its individualities like all the little parts the jealousy the anger the hatred the distrust the judgment the superiority all whatever else goes along with it and you have like just a single positive but you address it on its own with no outside influence and just be like, oh, there is a positive. That can get you through a lot of hard times. That is a technique that will get you through many, if not, nothing gets you through all the hard times. <laughs> It'll get you through a lot. Family and friends help. <laughs> that gets you through everyone. Um, but this will help in almost every situation. So anyway, that's 
that's it um i hope you take something from it um i use this pretty much the whole time it's actually my favorite theory uh just in like in psychology or whatever um so i'm sure i'll visit it again i'm sure i'll attack it from a different angle i'm sure i'll refine this video because it's way too long and rambly and i can do better but we're going for daily videos and we're going for this so that's it for today guys um i will see you again tomorrow uh hope you get so like something from it bye guys